Welcome to EngineeringTechnologyPress.com. I'm Eric. And I've been brewing with, uh, doing all grain brewing with uh, the homemade, very simple electric countertop brewing system that I put together. This is low cost, uh, extremely low cost, and knowing what I know now, easily within a weekend build time. So I thought I'd give a few uh, comments on what my experience has been with it, if I still like it, um, and particularly after uh, the, no, I guess this is November, or is it, yep, yeah, November, Brew Your Own Magazine came out that featured automated countertop brewing systems. Um, it covers a lot of the advantages, and you know, one of the things that I really enjoy is it being all electric. Well, electricity isn't cheap, it's readily controllable. Uh, you set your controller to the right temperature that you want to achieve and it takes care of all of that, right? So within a day, you know, this isn't something that you have to babysit. Not like gas where you, you know, want to be a little bit closer or something like that. Um, that automated system looks after it. So I'm today, for example, doing a few things outside a few things in the shop. I can leave, take the dog for a walk, go for a ski for an hour or something like that depending on what position I am in the cycle and that's not a problem. Um, this one is just controlled in terms of set the temperature so you can't just walk away and allow it to go through those various temperature steps. You have to manually do that. Flip side is it's a ten dollar controller so you know, much cheaper than uh, an Arduino setup or something like that. This is also, you know, no programming, no nothing. It's the STC 2000 uh, temperature controller. Really, really dirt simple. Uh, eBay purchase. So, do I like it? Well, you know, when you look at it, it's cost versus utility. And a lot of the ones in here are five gallon ones. This is a two and a half gallon unit. One of the reasons for that, just plugs into the outlet and you're using 120 volts or 110 versus uh, 220. You know, I don't have to pull out the stove, I don't have to go plug it into a dedicated circuit. This is easy to do and simple to do and it gives you that good boil on it um, with just outlet power. And two and a half gallons is reasonable for that. Now. All told, I thought, you know, I'd been brewing five gallon batches. Actually, two and a half gallon batches, if I'm brewing something like uh, that, I'll go through a lot of. Today it's an American uh, pale ale. That's a staple. You know, I'll double this up, I'll run two batches through. Each batch takes about four hours uh, turnkey. Um, you're not babysitting it for that much time, you just have to remember to come up and uh, change those temperature profiles, right? Or put in the hops as you're doing your boil at the right points. So two and a half gallons, double it easily within a day, and you're looking at a five gallon batch for some of your staples. A lot of those things though, that are really cool, you know, here we've got some neat, and this is an awesome magazine. If you haven't subscribed and you like brewing, this is, well worth the subscription price. Here you've got a couple cool brews for uh, more seasonal ones. Two and a half gallons, frankly, is about all I really want. You know, unless you're brewing for a lot of people, two and a half gallons will last. It allows you to have a diversity of things on tap and keep it fresh. So, size-wise, it's not really that much of a constraint. Flip side is, you know, in terms of the ability to get in power from your regular outlets, that's a real plus too. Do it on your countertop, do it in the garage. You know, the one drawback is, you know, if you're doing it inside, uh, you can get a lot of steam released. Now this is the winter, we're looking at January. So the house is very dry. So a little bit of steam evolution isn't gonna do anything It'll actually just add a little bit of moisture back to um, back to the air, so that's not a bad thing. 
in the summer this will usually be done outside right so I have that moisture evolution outside I'm doing it with 110 definite advantage there I can do it pretty much anywhere um, now in terms of cost we're looking at you know the pump over here um, that's pretty much the most expensive part of it the heating element simple stainless steel ball valves all of that simple the pumps the most expensive part these are off the shelf pots um, you know, I think this one was 16 and the inner one was twelve dollars or something like that you're not looking at a big expense conversely these ones in here they're lovely but phew, like I think there's some that are 700 bucks which isn't bad but considering this whole turnkey system you know ran about under 200 bucks easily under 200 dollars that's quite a difference um, some of these are gorgeous you know if you want to just walk out and purchase something you know you can do so but I think you can get a lot of the same utility by building one yourself this didn't take any special machine shop tools you know largely a drill with um, a step bit that can get you the openings the only larger opening is the one for your heating element and I did that with a air powered nibbler after I'd open it up with a step bit you know you could have a friend do that air powered nibblers are fairly cheap you know you can get even a cheap little compressor that you should have for blowing up your tires and you're not going to get a great duty cycle on it but you'll get the job done for the one hole or find a friend that has an air compressor right even if you have to buy a nibbler you're still way ahead so very easy very simple the electrical system easy set up too so if you're thinking about you know all grain brewing you're thinking about an electric countertop system unless you're really dedicated to brewing all those five gallon batches I'd say just a simple two and a half gallon countertop system like this definitely the way to go price point is right there you know in terms of the intensity of the project you're looking at about a weekend uh, of easy work uh, even including a few beers to celebrate after you've uh, used your power tools so for more on how I built this uh, you can go and see the show notes below and there'll be the link to the EnduringTechnologyPress.com website and you'll see all the pictures and uh, some of where I fell down the first time particularly on the gaskets I really do like uh, food grade silicon you know um, sealant in addition to the gaskets that come with uh, some of those fittings but really easy project something I think is well worth the time to dedicate to it so for this and more, see enduringtechnologypress.com. Thanks.